Greetings. It is I, the Deep Fact Friar. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It's been a while since we've done one of these. So, the reason that we're doing today's video, 22nd of March, on this day in history, it's very nice, is this. On the 22nd of March, in 1322, 698 years ago, Edward II took his revenge on Thomas, the Earl of Lancaster, beheading him outside Pontefract Castle, which is up north, uh, for the part that he played in the death of Piers Gaveston. Not Gaviscon, but Gaveston. Now, the story is this. Thomas was a baron, okay, and as such he held loads and loads and loads of land. Edward II was his cousin. And at first everything was cool between them. They were good friends and what have you. Okay. And Thomas supported Edward. Okay. But he despised, despised Piers Gaveston. And the feeling was mutual between them. They hated each other. Okay. Now Piers had already been exiled twice. Okay. Was captured. And they moved him around from castle to castle. Warwick heard that it, Akute, Akute, that he was in Deddington Castle in Oxford. So he rode there overnight, like that. <laughs> Captured him, brought him back to Warwick Castle, and on a march to Kenilworth Castle, yeah, they stopped at Bucklow Hill. And that was where Piers Gaveston was murdered by two Welshmen who ran him through. Yeah, yeah, ran him through. Okay, but what was interesting was it was on Lancaster's lands. It was on Lancaster's lands and it was on Lancaster's orders. Thomas then was captured by Edward II, his cousin, by his gang, okay, who brought him back to Pontefract and it tried him in a kangaroo court. Very, very easy. The decision was already made and he was sentenced to death. But because he was the king's cousin, okay, and the king was like, Meh, rather than having him hung, drawn and quartered. Oops, that's me belly. Rather than having him hung, drawn and quartered, what they did was it was just a simple beheading. They beheaded him straight away. And that is what happened on this day, 698 years ago, um, in outside Pontefract Castle. So, uh, just want to say a massive thank you to everybody for all the likes, the shares, the comments uh, on this week's posts. In the last seven days, we've had something like 66,000 people have, have seen the, the posts and the videos of the Deep Fat Friar. Um, 13,000 people have engaged with it and fed comments in and what have you. Uh, we've had 167 new followers. God bless you, my child. And we've had a, 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 about 160 odd new likes to the page. So thank you to everybody that's done it. We're going to keep posting this stuff because obviously... Um, at times like this, I think it's important to learn stuff and, 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 and we're in unprecedented times. So unprecedented times call for unprecedented measures. So we're just going to spread a bit of joy, um, tell a bit of history in as humorous a way as we can and share it out there on Facebook and share it around with the world. So if you know anything about Edward II, Piers Gaveston, Thomas, the Earl of Lancaster, um, uh, Bucklow Hill, Pontefract Castle, anything like that, just share it. One last thing though, what is really interesting is the French people always maintained that Edward II and Piers were um, gay. Um, and I, I don't know, I'm not so sure, because Edward was 26 when he married, uh, when he got married to the French girl, right? And, 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 and she was 12, I think, she was 12. So imagine, you're at your wedding day, you're 26, your bride's 12. Are you going to talk to your 12-year-old bride in French who you, you don't really speak that well? Um, or are you going to speak with your mate? And, and I think that was what the French got. They, they mistook it. Uh, maybe he was gay, maybe he wasn't. Who really cares? What we do know is that he got right under the nose of a few people and gave them the right hump. But that's it. Today's video, short, sweet. Thanks for sharing, everybody. We're going to carry on posting and sharing out our history on this day from the City of Culture from this sitting room here of culture <laughs> and uh, god bless you all mothering sunday here's a little fact for you just to finish off 16th century 
the people who worked in the houses and worked for the uh, the big houses like Downton Abbey and things like that, they were all given a day off. They were given a day off to go back to their mother church. So people would make their way back to their mother church on this Lent Air Sunday. That's why it's called Mothering Sunday, because they would go home and see their mothers, because the rich barons and landowners would give them a day off. Very kind of them, I'm sure. Uh, but that's it. Enjoy today's fact. Share it, post it, clip it, whatever you want to do. Um, thank you all for, for everything that you, you do and all your encouraging comments and what have you. God bless you, my child, on this Mothering Sunday, and we'll see you all soon. Cheers now. Bye.